Hey there, we are in chapter two. We're getting down and dirty with the data, right? So now you're actually going to do some calculations. Um, as you're going to see in this class, it's not like it's calculus, that it's very hard math. It's just a lot of formulas and symbols that uh, you really need to get these down, okay? Um, we're still dealing with definitions of frequency distribution, just a table that has counts of how many uh, values are in a particular category. Um, you're going to see that a lot of times they're going to ask you to find the class width, or they might give it to you. Um, if, if they don't give it to you, then you just take the largest number minus the smaller number and divide by how many classes they tell you to do. Uh, midpoint, the middle value okay, of the data set. Uh, class boundaries, this one's kind of weird that a lot of students have trouble with. Let's say that you start at 50. We'll go back a little bit to 49.5. So in other words, we're trying to make it look like there's no gaps in between the data. Uh, frequency, again, count, and typically you'll see with that little F. Relative frequency, this is um, a percentage or a proportion or a uh, decimal, a fraction, three out of 35 fall in a particular category. So the count, the frequency over sample size. Look at that little n. Okay, little n is sample size. Uh, cumulative frequency, ju you just keep summing these up. The frequency that of the category you're in and the one above it. So guess what? When you get all the way to the bottom, you better be at 1 or 100%. Uh, stem and leaf, this is just a way to actually plot data where typically, like if you have 25, the 2 will be the stem and the 5 will be the leaf. Pie chart, this is probably one most of y'all have a lot of experience with, with where you have a circle and um, all the pieces are percentages, okay, a proportion to the whole. Uh, population size, remember up here above I said little n is sample size, capital N is the entire population that you're interested in of study. All right, then we get into measures of central tendency, the mean, the average. You know how to take an average, right? You add up all your grades and you divide by the total number of grades. Well, we can either have a population mean, which you're going to see all the Greek letters, mu, um, is for population. That little sigma, E, means to add up all the values and then divide by the number of values. So you can see the only two differences here in the population in the sample is the population uses a Greek letter and uses a capital N for population size. The sample mean uses X bar, right, an X with a bar over it. That's the sample mean. And then we're adding up all the values divided by the sample size. Now, typically I said, you know, how do you find your grade, grade average? We add up all the grades, divide by the number of grades. Um, that's not very normal in a class because a lot of times we weight things. Like we say your homework is weighted 20%, your exam 60%, and your finals 20%. So what you really do is you get the average of each one of those categories, multiply it by the weight. That's what's happening here. Um, and then you add them all up. Once again, some meaning add them, add them all up. Median, the middle value, the only problem I ever see students make with that, don't forget to put them in order. Don't forget to put them in order. The mode, what uh, um, most frequent occurring, like what uh, movie did most people go see? The Avengers, right? Something like that. All right, so that's measure of central tendency. Measure of vari variation, the range, how spread out the data is, the difference in the max and the minimum. The variance and standard deviation, these go together. Um, a lot of times you need the variance for a particular formula, and this is how far away you are from the mean. If you look at this, your data value is x minus the population mean. So remember I told you up above Greek letters, population, sigma squared, all right, you take each data value, subtract it from the average, the population mean, square it, divide by the population size. You do the same thing with the sample variance, but once again, you're using a sample mean. And notice here um, is a little correction factor of the sample size minus one. 
the standard deviation is the square root of the variance. The standard deviation is the square root of the variance. They look identical, except I have a square root here. We typically like the standard deviation better because the units are the same. What do I mean by that? Um, this might be the spread of the grades in my class squared. Well, who talks like that, right? And, and then you're probably going, well, then why do we even need the variance? Sometimes you need it for particular formulas. We typically like the standard deviation better because the units are the same. So the grades are the grades, the dollars are dollars, uh, minutes are minutes. We're up here, we're getting grade squared, dollar squares, minute squared. The empirical rule, I have a video on this. This is very important you understand. When you have a bell-shaped curve, this is a rule. Students always ask, well, the numbers always stay the same. Uh-huh, it's a rule. 68% of the data fall within one standard deviation, okay, below and above. That's the plus or minus and plus, I should say. 95% two standard deviation, 99.7% three standard deviations. Learn this. You will see this again. If you have any questions on it, ask me. Coefficient of variation. Um, this is kind of nice because it describes the standard deviation as a percentage of the mean. But the nice part about it, you could compare, um, you know, things with the different units. Like I always say, you know, how do you figure out the best athlete? You know, if you're talking about Michael Jordan or um, trying to think of somebody good uh, Tom Brady <laughs> is it's two different sports, right? Well, how could you compare them? This would be a way that you could compare, um, you know, because certainly in basketball is going to have different stats than football. And then you'll finish up with the measures of position quartiles. Um, if you're in the bottom quartile of a class, the bottom 25 percent, quartile 250, the middle median, quarter, um, quartile 3, 75 percent, quartile 4, all the data. Interquartile range, IQR, the difference between the third quartile three and quartile one. And then they'll ask you to um, look at constructing a box plot based on the five number summary, which is just the minimum, the maximum, quartiles one, two, and three. All right, so be sure that you feel very comfortable with all these formulas, calculations, symbols, get the symbols down, and ask me if you have any questions.